Are those big boxes weighing you down? Panic not, I have the solution for you. Ta-da! Tiny games that can fit in just one hand and that you can solo. We're gonna go through 15 of them. Let's get started. Howdy and welcome, I'm Mike, board games for one, your board gaming every dude. And the first game is actually wallet size and it's from Button Shy Games. Button Shy Games publishes a new wallet size game every month. So you can check out their publisher site. I've got it in the description below. I might link it on a card here. We'll see what happens. But anyway, what I have, they sent to me Battlecrest as well as the solo expansion. So Battlecrest is a versus game. It's a one to two player card game. As you can see in the pictures there, you get to choose one of four heroes. After you get the solo expansion, you have four heroes that you play and pit against another of the remaining three heroes of your choice. So you've got a lot of mix and match variability and you actually have a landscape that's laid out as well as your player abilities and your opponent's player abilities. And this is a solo AI deck. So this is an intelligent solo opponent that follows a priority system. Make it an, a nice challenge for you. You get to actually move around and try to defeat them. Last man standing is the one that wins. Next game. Little change of pace here with In Dreams from Sideroom Games. Now this just finished on Kickstarter, but I expect we'll be able to see it on their website, the Sideroom Games website pretty soon, maybe at a, a local board game store. We'll see what happens. But this is actually a storytelling game where you end up, there's not really a win or lose. There are resolutions, but what you're doing is you're flipping over different plots and events. You create a character and you try to resolve some issues within a story. It's great for writing prompts and things like that, or just if you need some relaxation, maybe even a little therapy. Speaking of Kickstarter games, little bonus one here, an extra game is called Bonnie and Clyde. I don't have the box with me right now, but this is an awesome one to two player game, super crunchy decisions where you are playing Bonnie and Clyde on a road trip, trying to get them to have their romantic evening, their very last one before justice catches up with them. I've got a couple videos on it. I'll put the cards up here so you can check those out. I don't know what the availability will be after the Kickstarter delivers, but keep an eye on the publisher, Yeast Games. Let's continue with the next available game. This little fight in a box from Fight in a Box Games is called Mouse, Cheese, Cat, Cucumber. Tiny little box. This is only $13, I believe. You can get it from the publisher. You can get it from your local game stores as well. This little thing has one, two, three, really. Well, it comes with three solo modes, so it's a one to four player game. You can play it multiplayer. But the solo modes include you build out a maze and you're trying to complete different missions based on whether you're playing as the mouse, the cheese, the cat, or the cucumber. There's a whole story that interlocks them. So one of the solo modes is actually taking all of the cards and putting together a maze where all the, is basically a picture where all the pieces fit together and you can actually decipher the story and solve whatever mystery there is to the box if you put the maze together right. That's one solo mode. And then there are two other solo modes where you're creating an ever-shifting maze, trying to feat to beat one of your objectives. It's a different objective each time that you play. And then there is the campaign mode. If you, I think it's $20 total, if you get everything with the two expansions. And I've got a video of the actual campaign mode up here. And Speaking of mouse, cheese, cat, cucumber, we're actually doing a giveaway just for my loyal followers here. Y'all have been amazing. Thank you so much for all of your viewing. So if you would be interested in entering this giveaway to win this free copy of Mouse, Cheese, Cat, Cucumber, and unfortunately I am very sorry, this is the continental North America area only, and that's simply because the international shipping stuff makes me a little nervous right now. I don't know what to expect. I don't want to disappoint someone. So just for like the Canada, North America, okay? All of North America, there you go, continental. We'll do my best. If you're interested in entering, just send me an email to boardgamesfor1 at gmail.com and just mention the giveaway in the subject line and say whatever you want. Say howdy, tell me how your day was, tell me how your day was not, whatever. Whatever you want to do, totally fine. Good by me, you can leave it empty. But anyway, I will close this out on December 1st. 
2022 of this year. So be sure to send your information then. Just send the email. I will reply to you if you are the winner. I'll also announce it on my channel, probably in the community tab. That's the easiest place for me to do that. If I can mention it in a video, I will as well. So best of luck to you and thank you so much for all of you who continue to come back. It means a lot. Moving on. Little detective for you. We've got the Deck Detective series. There's three, four different cases out right now. I have the Will Without an Air, but as you can see, this is a one to however many players, one to six player game where you are solving a mystery. You actually get a 3D crime scene and you are flipping over certain cards, choosing which clues to keep, which clues to discard. You can't keep them all and there's a price to pay to get each one and you have a time limit because once you get to the bottom of the deck, then you have to answer questions to try to solve the crime, find out how good of a detective you are. This is from DV Games. Next game. All right, we've got an escape room adventure. There are several different ones you can do. There's exit, unlock, there's, um, it's not detective, deckscape, and more. There are plenty more, but what I have is unlock, and I think it's a good starting point. It is good to know this is an app dependent. You don't use the app much. It's mainly for a timer and entering codes into like a machine so that you can open doors and things like that. If you want a totally non-app one, that's probably going to be something more like Exit and Deckscape games. But anyway, unlock, pretty cool. You lay out your cards, you end up creating an escape room on the table we have to solve different codes, unlock different things, explore different things. Sometimes you have to use the app to explore a room. Just depends on which one you're doing. This is the formula. There are so many different ones. Next game, Pigment from, who are you? Copper Frog Game. So this is pretty easy to pick up if you're at like Books of Millions. Sometimes I think I've seen it at Barnes and Noble. You can always check your local game store, publisher sites, all that for every one of these games. Pretty simple. This is how many players do you go up to? One to three players. So it's a low player count game playing solo, basically you're at a bazaar, you're like an artist apprentice trying to get different pigments to get different paints to complete different masterpieces. You collect those masterpieces for points. That's really all there is to it. Simple game, little game in a box. Upside down. Next game, pretty cool one here. We've got Hunted, Mining Colony 415. So Hunted is a series, I know there's a third one that was just released on Kickstarter, I don't know anything about it. This is Aliens, basically. It's Aliens, you're on a colony, and it's cool because it's got a dexterity element. So what you have is you have your card layout where you are drawing cards to reveal different items, abilities, and enemies. You're also revealing location cards. In order to open location cards, you have to spend abilities on the main cards that you draw. Then when it comes to combat, you are actually tossing tokens and they have to land in a target area in order to land as hits. If you lose all your HP, you lose the game. If you make it all the way through the location deck to the finale, you win the game. Pretty straightforward. And that is by Barrett Publishing. Next game, the other hunted game, Kobayashi Tower. And this is, what's that movie? What is that movie with Bruce, Bruce Willis? Die Hard. This is Die Hard. The card game right so this is similar to the previous hunted same exact setup where you have location cards and you have to get to the bottom of the location deck to get to a finale be the finale in order to win lose all your hp you lose but it is different in that it does not have the dexterity element instead where the previous game did not have any dice but had dexterity this one has no dexterity but relies on dice so if you like dice rolling that's great. It does have some mitigation to it, but basically you're doing the same thing. You're collecting items and ammunition and weapons and such, also revealing enemies that you have to fight against while revealing items that you need in order to access new locations so you can get to the top of the tower, save your girlfriend, be the hero, blah, blah, blah. Good stuff. Same thing, Barrett Publishing. Next game. This next one is a bit of a hidden gem for the right person. Okay, so this is Pulp Detective. I do not recommend this. Um, just for beginners, or if you don't like old pulp detective style themes, don't go for it, all right? But if you do, this is great. So in Pulp Detective, you are solving crimes. It's less of actually solving a mystery and more of tableau building, where you are building out a storyline with your cards in order to find the villain and then combat and defeat. The villain. What you're seeing, I actually have the entire collection, which is the base game and three expansions and the puzzle mat to lay it out on. The base game is plenty to play by. 
so it's hard to find. You might find there's one called Pulp Invasion. I think that's a little more findable and that's more like 60s space theme, but exact same idea of gameplay from what I'm aware. But yeah, if that appeals to you, this is a real gem. And before we pull out the next game though, a word from our sponsor. Oh, come on, you know I don't have a sponsor, but if I did, maybe it would be Sir Meeple. Sir Meeple provides some pretty awesome board gaming apparel. He even made these awesome clothes just for this channel, just for you. So be sure to check it out. Get your very own hero shirt. Get your very own hero shoes. Super cool stuff. Also check out some of his other creators. Awesome stuff. Sir Meeple, we love you. Back to the show. Next game. A little bit of a real-time game for you from Capstone Games. This is Lux Eterna. You can see my playthrough of it here. So in Lux Eterna, you are on this space station or spaceship something with a console in front of you, and you have these six engine things that are failing. You are trying to repair three of them. If you repair three of them, you win. If three or more go bad, I'm pretty sure, then you die, the whole thing explodes. So you are racing against time. You have 10 minutes in normal mode. You can make it longer to make it easier. You can also play without the timed element if you don't like that kind of stress, but it might become a little too easy for you. If you want that pressure of having to make decisions of, I've got to flip over these cards and I've got 10 seconds to decide to, to put it over here, 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 or here. Each location has a different effect. Then that's the game for you. Next game, this little work of art right here. TGG Games and Side Room Games. I thought it was Side Room Games. I saw the TGG and it threw me off. TGG Games and Side Room Games. Black Sonata. This is the best solo hidden movement game that I've played. There are other hidden movement. There's um, Mind MGMT, a much bigger box that's great multiplayer and it has a great solo mode too. I actually prefer this one personally. This depends on your theme. It's a lot smaller. There is an expansion available, but you play as Shakespeare traveling through old Victorian London trying to find the ever mysterious Lady in Black, right? No, Dark Lady. The Dark Lady. So you are finding clues to identify not just where she is, you have to find where she is, you also have to find out who she is. So if you can arrive at her location and correctly identify who she is, you win the game. Otherwise, time runs out and she's gone. She escapes the city and never more do you know. Yeah, whatever, whatever. All right, next game, Maquis. Now, okay, well, first of all, who's a buy? Who are you, who are you? Sigamex, Side Room Games again. On there, apparently I really like their stuff. For some reason, people have asked me why I would put Maquis and Black Sonata together. Someone asked me, aren't they the same game? I'm, unless I'm missing something really big, and please let me know if you've played both and they're the same game, like, let me know. I have no idea what they have in common other than they're a fairly similar size exact same size box but a lot of times publishers have the same box um they both do have a board and they both do have some cards but they're different sized cards and this has like wooden tokens this has cardboard tokens i don't other than that i don't know what the similarity is that's hidden movement this is more pick up and deliver completing missions so you're in world war ii france i believe you are part of the revolt in France trying to stand against Germany and so you're going hiding between these German guards trying to complete missions pick up things and deliver them to certain points if you complete that mission and successfully escape the city then you make it out but if you get caught by the baddies you know then you get a whole kind of setback and that can also end the game so I have no idea what those two games have to do with each other please let me know what I'm missing I have no idea. They are totally independent, completely different games, um, but beautiful. I love it. And remember, hit that like button so more people can find these resources. Next, Hostage Negotiator. Anyway, um, somebody, who was it? It was on Instagram, Smash Up Guy. He said he heard the Priceline Negotiator whenever he did that. So I see Captain Kirk. I forget his real name. That guy. I see him every time I play this game now. But 
Uh, what you're seeing in my pictures is actually the full collection with all the expansions, including the playmat. But you can buy just the base game, this little box here, in order to get started and see if it's for you. In this game, you are a hostage negotiator. I've got a full video, actually, of a little more detail about this game up here. But it's by Van Ryder Games, and it is a game of dice rolling, but also of luck mitigation by utilizing your hand of cards. You can actually bypass the dice if you play your cards right. So that's part of the biggest strategy is learning which cards to sacrifice in order to manage your luck and talk whoever the hostage holder criminal person is down because the madder they get, the worse it gets. Then they start killing hostages. It gets really sad. If more than half the hostages get killed, then you lose the game. And then there are a couple ways for the game to end in victory. Either they can escape, which isn't really a victory, but at least, you know, not, not everybody died. Uh, you can also capture them, and that's great. You can also have them shot, which is a very sad ending. Um, but pretty cool game if you get the expansions. It comes in little card packs with different abductors, and then you can get Crime Wave, which adds more abductors. It also adds a big box, but it's a big box because it holds all of your tiny boxes, right? So the Crime Wave is actually a small box game with a big box so you can fit everything inside. And then there is the career expansion, which I absolutely love. And it adds a campaign mode, which is just awesome. And then of course you can get a play map, but just start with this, see if you like it. Find out if it's for you. Next, we're moving on to Weird Giraffe Games. We've got two Weird Giraffe Games. Look at that beautiful artwork. Just look at those colors. I love these colors. So Big Easy Busking, Big Easy referring to New Orleans, and you play as street performers. So unique theme going on here. And what you are doing is you are street performers playing against a robot band when you're playing solo. So kind of like a scary Chuck E. Cheese band, the robot's going crazy. And what you're competing for is the most money, the most tips. You get enough money, enough tips, then you win the game. You'll have an option of different songs that you can play by the layout of your cards. You want to play the right songs to the right audience. They'll like different moods. They might be love song mood, party mood. Or if it's wild, it doesn't mean wild mood, it means that it can be any mood. And the more that they are happy, the more money you get. By the time the game ends, you want to have more money than your robot opponent. There are three or four different robots you can play against with scaled difficulty. Next! Also by Weird Draft Games, Fire in the Library. Now, when I looked at this, this was back when I looked at ratings um, on uh, Board Game Geek there. I mean, I look sometimes now, I don't give a lot of weight to it because I don't tend to agree. Um, this was still, I think it was below 7. It was like 6.5 or maybe it was at a 7. I don't remember. Um, so, of course, that kept me from buying the game for a little while, but I kept looking at it and I was like, it just looks really cool. So I thought I'd try it out. And... I mean, granted, I wouldn't rate it like a 10 or anything like that, but it's definitely, it's, it's, it's a good game. I don't know, I don't understand ratings sometimes. But anyway, this uh, plays solo, but it's also for like one to however many, one to six players, one to six players. And what's cool is it's a push your luck game. So if you like a little push your luck, but you want a solo game, that's what you're doing. The idea is there is this library with all the world's knowledge, but a fire is coming to consume it and it's unstoppable. You can't stop the fire. So what you have to do is you have to run in the library and you have to collect the books that you think are most important and run back out and then decide, are you gonna stay in there for longer and try and get more books? Or are you gonna get out with what you have and be safe? The more books and knowledge you have, of course that counts as victory points. You need a certain amount of victory points in order to win the game. The solo mode, you are not going up against a robot librarian. No, you are not. Instead, you have 12 rounds to try and save as many books as possible. So it's a bit beat your own score-ish, but still really enjoyed it. Enjoyed the push your luck. And you get to collect different items that can help you out. And what happens is each turn, you end up flipping over cards that reveal, say this was a safe picture of the library. Well, you flip the card and the next one might be more fire right and the next one might be even more fire the more fire that spreads all the way until there's nothing left of that section of the library so you're going and trying to collect the books and also not catch on fire yourself the push your luck comes from the bag drawing mechanic where you're drawing cubes out of a bag and they might be safe cubes they might be knowledge and books or they might be a fire cube and enough fire cubes 
and sorry, you might lose everything. Let's bring them all back for one more showing. Voila. 15 games you can fit in one hand. I am really thankful that y'all waited for this video. I know it's been a week and a half, two weeks or so. If you're interested in purchasing any of these, check with your local game stores. If you don't have that privilege, if you don't have a nice one near you, I put a link for how you can purchase it in the description below. So feel free to click that as well. I'm gonna send you to this next video I made just for you. As always, love y'all. I'll see you next time. I try so hard.